You're tuned in to Tackle Fanatics TV, and in this episode of TFTV, we check out Fox's Challenge Part 3, River Carp with Mark Pictures. I'm Mark Pictures, fishery owner, consultant, and carp freak. Double bubble. Big pits, tiny ponds, day tickets, club lake syndicates, I fished them all. Let's turn up for the books. <laughs> I love the peace, the tranquility, the anticipation and the thrill of the chase, but ultimately it boils down to one thing, a carp in the bottom of a landing net. High five. <laughs> I've been the traveller in Crafty Carper. I'm now the face of Total Carp's 20s challenge, so I certainly know a thing or two about catching carp under pressure. But I now face my toughest challenge yet. Carp fishing missions set by you on Fox's Facebook page. And once the guys at Fox select that challenge, I have no option but to accept. Can I do it? Yeah. Oh, we got him. Yes. This is a challenge. Gladiator hands. That's Carpy. You want to dub a bit of Enya music or something like that over the back? Was it Enya? The grasshopper on me, that isn't Carpy. What's up Carp Freaks and welcome to my third challenge. This is one I am really looking forward to. Jake Waterman wrote in and asked me if I could catch a carp from a river such as the Neen. So Jake, here we are at the River Neen. And I'm, uh, like I said, this is something I'm really looking forward to. I've never ever caught a river carp. I've only ever done 24 hours on a river before which ended in a blank. So I can catch my first ever river carp, especially on film. It's gonna be absolutely awesome. Can't wait to get started. The river's just behind me. I'm gonna go for a walk now and bait a few spots, so uh, why don't you come along with me? Now, no matter what type of water you're fishing, location is obviously key, but even more so on a river. And you've got miles and miles of water, and there may be stretches where there are no carp at all. Um, <laughs> So obviously we need to try and find any sort of clues to try and locate the carp. I mean, I'm stood on a bridge, prime example. Any sort of structure is going to act as a, a fish holding area, hopefully. And then we've got weir pools, uh, moored boats, lots of overhanging trees, lily pads. Um, my own personal favourite, back channels. So I think what I'm going to do now, I've got my walking shoes on. I'm going to go for a, go for a walk and see what I can see. Just been flicking in a few um, pellets, feeding the chub just for a bit of fun. And out of the reeds pops a carp about 20 pound. Um, can't believe it really so, but we're gonna get a bit more bait in here. And this is obviously looking like a, a good spot for mummies later on today. I don't think it's carp, it can't be, it can't be. It can be though, can't it, that's the thing. That's a, I don't think Bream would kick it up like that, would it? Oh, sorry. Well, just about half an hour ago, I baited up that area where I saw that, that carp, and it's already <laughs> coloured up big time. I don't know if it's carp that are feeding there, or Bream, or what, but something's feeding. 
Um, it's just a big muddy cloud all over where I put the pallet. So I think what I'm going to do, like I say, I don't even know if it's carp that are feeding, but I, it can, I can't ignore it. I'm going to run back to the van, get a rod, and uh, I think it's certainly worth a few hours here. Come on, you f***ing idiot. Oh, f*** the f***. I'm getting in a mood now. Hot sun. Well, that didn't go quite the plan. Thought it seemed too good to be true. Turned out I wasn't meant to be fishing over there. <laughs> the, uh, we managed to get them fish feeding uh, on the pallets that I put in. What was clouded up, I thought this looks awesome. Ran back to the van, got a rod, before I could even cast out, bailiff hand on the shoulder, not meant to be fishing here, son. So uh, that's that. Joy to despair in three seconds flat, more or less. Feet are soaking wet, it started raining as well. Now I've got a mile walk back to the van. So uh, my walking boots are ruined. But uh, on the plus side, the bailiff did actually point out another spot, which he said is definitely worth checking out. There's a lot of carp there. So uh, yeah, run back to the van and we'll go and check out this other spot. Well, I've arrived at the stretch that the uh, bailiff recommended earlier on and it's actually a place that has cropped up time and time again by people that have recommended it. Uh, my mate Lewis, he suggested this area and Jake as well who also put this challenge forward, he suggested this stretch. So it's come under good recommendation. Um, now the stretch itself is actually quite a barren piece of water. It, it's pretty straight and, and fairly featureless. You've got open fields along one or both banks. Um, you've got pads down the margins, and there isn't really a lot to it. Um, so, looking at it, you can see why I've chosen this particular swim. It's the only 
area really where there's any cover. You've got these overhanging trees on the far margin and like I mentioned before the, the fish love structure and you put this one bit of structure in amongst a mile of fairly featureless <laughs> barren bit of waterway and hopefully the fish should be here. So um, I mean, actually there's actually quite a lot of, uh, of roach and small fish topping um, so again you know you think if they prefer this area then hopefully the carp will too. Who knows? But um, I'm quietly confident so uh, I'm going to get a few rigs tied up and uh, get started. Just been sat here on the bed chair looking out across the river and I've just seen a carp head and shoulder about six foot from the far margin. I was staring right at the exact spot when it did it. I couldn't believe it. I grabbed Harry's knee when it did it. Oh mate, I'm so excited now. Right, let's get the rods in. Come on, I can't wait anymore Harry. Hurry up. Did you see it? Oh man. Me and Harry are really excited now. We've just seen another fish roll on another spot. Um, it wasn't the, the first fish I, I saw. The first fish I saw was a common of about 10, 12 pound. This one, I wouldn't like to put a size in it. Well, I mean, it, it rolled in, in the, well, how far is it? 20 yard in front of me. It looked a mid 20 to me all day long. So it is looking promising. Let's hope I don't mess it up. <laughs> well, Originally, my plan was to uh, give it a fair old bit of bait, but having seen two fish now showing the area, the fish are obviously here, so I don't want to start lazing in kilos and kilos of bait right on top of the heads. So all I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to put all three rods over the far side, which is where I've seen the fish anyway. Um, I'm just going to go easy with, with the bait to start with. I'm just going to, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw out maybe half a dozen, 10 baits, just to sort of, semi spook the fish out the area rather than just having a four ounce lead smashing in amongst them. Um, so I'm going to throw in a few baits and just cast the rig over tight to the, the far margin. Um, I mean it's almost sort of like a canal really because you've got a shelf on both sides and like a, a boat channel if you like where the, where the boats move down. So I um, want to get it tight to that far margin. You can see the overhanging tree over there and there's a few pads there as well. So I want to get it tight to there so the rig's sat on top of that shelf. So uh, let's do that. First of all though, throw out a few baits, if I can reach. Grab a back lead. There is, well, there can be quite heavy uh, boat traffic through this stretch at times. Let's grab a back lead. Just obviously to keep it, keep the line pinned down, so I don't get caught up on the uh, on the back of a boat on the propeller or anything. Swing this just off that, just off the uh, main shelf, so it's down the down that channel. So it's quite deep in that main channel as well, so at least I know the at least I know the line will be out of harm's way. It's not for any line concealment or anything like that. I don't. Well, I'm no river expert, but I don't think river carp are particularly line shy. They're not exactly pressured fish is purely just to keep it down out of harm's way so I don't end up uh, being attached to a boat. I just showed you the advantages of using strong tackle on rivers. I just um, cast over the far bank there and as I was winding in I caught up a branch 
and it probably caught up about a rod length from, from the far margin. So this branch is obviously coming out a fair way into the river. So I ended up pulling for a break, but uh, if you look, I actually managed to snap the branch and it isn't just a little branch either. That's a proper branch, that's a clean break. So yeah, 20 pound extra set line, leg core leader, 20 pound Camatex soft duck link, size two SSBP, and the branch broke. Yeah, I win. Well, good morning. It's about half past four. Um, feeling a bit dejected, if I'm honest. Had nothing through the night. I kind of woke up about, about two o'clock in the morning and was just wide awake. Hadn't caught anything. And to be honest, I kind of expected to catch something around, I don't know, sometime during the night. And when I woke up at two in the morning and I hadn't caught one, I thought, hmm, are they still here? But it's now half past four. I've not seen any signs that they are still here. I mean, obviously we saw them two fish yesterday um, and I've not seen anything since I cast out really. So whether that little bit of disturbance has, has sent them off up river or down river, I don't know. I'm just looking for something inspirational to happen. So uh, I think the only thing to do is get the kettle on. Well, that was pretty savage. Whew. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> These river cart bites are quite uh, quite brutal. They've ran out barefoot. Harry managed to kick me on the rod over. Thanks for that, Harry. It's just kind of lodged itself in the uh, stream away down the middle though. The sun's bright. Oh, he's free, he's free. the end of that. Well, that was exciting for a few moments. Oh. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. Even the steaming kettle's annoying me now. Right. Start again. I can't remember actually feeling this gutted for ages. I mean, I've had oak poles and you think, oh, never mind. But I feel wounded. Physically and mentally wounded. And I know they always feel big when you lose them. But that one genuinely did feel like it. It just wasn't didn't feel skittish like a, I know it was pulling my arm off and everything, but it didn't feel skittish like a, 
you know, like a, like a double. It just was just on a big, powerful sort of surge. And it was out of the snags. It, when, I, when, it, when it came free me, it was out of the snags, just running up the, up the middle channel. I just hope it isn't my only chance. One sort of... If I'm going to take a positive out of it, I always have to take a positive, positive out of something bad, as you've probably noticed. But that bike kind of came not long after the first boat came through the swim. Um, I think obviously it's just disturbed a bit of the bait, kicked it up a bit and maybe it's just sparked off a bit of a, you know, a little bit of feeding response. So I'm kind of hoping now that all the boats I've picked up, it might it might help things because last night was was pretty dead which I wasn't expecting but we'll see anyway top up the swim with a bit more bait I think I'll freshen the other two rods while I'm at it and we'll try again This is Jake, he's the man that set me this challenge. Look what he's done, he's only gone and popped down and brought me some fabs. What a legend. <laughs> I think encountered the first bream or chub of the session. It's not a carp, put it that way. Well it's something. I've actually just put on a slightly smaller up right there. I was fishing with double 18 mil. Fishing with a, an 18 mil topped off with it with a 10. And I did actually do it with kind of the expectation that I might hook a bream just so I can see or gauge how much they're eating. On the double 18 mil I'm not going to get pestered by bream. I don't know how many bream are in the swim and I don't know how much bait's getting eaten. I mean this rod's only been in the water um, a couple of hours I've already had a bream so at least now I know I need to, I need to keep topping up. It just allows me just to, to gauge the feeding a bit better. Well, the boat's just come through me swim and he uh, thought he was doing me a massive favour by going right over the far bank. But I think it's going to have disturbed all the bait. It's only about five foot deep over there. So I think all the wash is going to have disturbed that bait. Some of it will have rolled down the shelf. So I'm just going to top up with uh, another 50, 60 baits over each rod. Too warm to forget your shorts and all that. Thunderpants are just shorts anyway. Feels good to get a bit of air going around them. That doesn't even make sense. More. It's not even spelled more. What does M double O spell? Moo. No, it doesn't. Cows don't more, <laughs> do they? <laughs> anyway, was that okay? My back channel was okay. Are oh, you still filming? Ah, crafty. Did you talk about overhangs? Yes, I've talked about overhangs and back channels. Back. 
following someone's remarks on YouTube on the last video, I'm going to do the rest of this session in my waders. Someone pointed out that I'm always showing the full moon, which isn't my fault. I just happen to have a unusually high anus. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, uh, in any case, full moons are carpy. So, what can I say? Carpy without knowing it. Mm. Big commons like full moon. Exactly. Show them a full moon. Bosh. What's, your, what's your PV common? Well, 56.8. And that was actually on a full moon. The river name's full of commons. So actually, I'm going to take my waders off. Give them the full moon. Bosh, we can't fail. Mr. Miyagi. Oh, I missed it. Well, there isn't really a great deal to report since the last time you saw me. It's been kind of a frustrating day. This sort of fishing is just so alien to me. Um, I like to think myself of being quite mobile. If I can't see fish, I'll, I'll, I'll move around, try and find them. But it's hard enough behind them as, as it is. And there isn't really many spots where you can actually uh, visualize fish. You're just kind of almost going on a bit of a, a gut instinct in, in areas that you think they're going to be. Um, I mean, I've had three bream today, so I know that there, are, there is fish visiting the spots and, and eating, eating bait. Um, and I have had a little bit of a, a two. I went and checked out a, a spot up um, by a, a bridge upstream. Um, again, saw, saw bream there. Um, Harry the cameraman, he saw a carp up there as well, but it's one carp a mile up the river when you know i know there are carp visiting this area so i've, I've stayed put for tonight um i did see a couple of fish roll a few moments ago um two fish in the space of a couple of minutes and then, and then nothing um so i don't know i'm kind of going into tonight Hopeful, but not exactly brimful of confidence. But you know, the, I had that take last night. I know the, the carp are visiting here and feeding here, or at least one is, or was. So uh, I guess we'll just have to see. Hopefully you'll see me in the middle of the night, all illuminated, playing my first river carp. Let's see, eh? Well, good morning. There isn't a lot to report, I'm afraid. Um, didn't even have any bream through the night, which I was expecting. I mean, I had four yesterday during the hottest part of the day, but uh, yeah, even the bream left me alone last night. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you the rigs I've been using so far this session. Now, this is what I, I started off with, and it is a fairly hefty setup. I mean, on the rivers there's all sorts of unseen obstacles and snags. There's, a, there's quite a lot of weed running down that central channel as well. Lots of heavy streamer weed, which that fish managed to uh, free itself in. So um, yeah, you do need to beef the tackle up and this is what I'm using. Hook link is about seven inches, eight inches of 20 pound Camatex soft. And then coming down from there, we've got a, a big hook, a size two Armour Point SS BP hook, short shank beak point hook. I've got one of the trans khaki line liner sleeves over there as well, just to help improve the, the hooking potential of the rig. Small piece of silicon down the shank to create a blowback effect. And the hook bait is double 18 mil um, mainline hybrid boilies. Now I started off using that because there is quite a lot of bream in the stretch from what I've been told. So that was something that I, I felt that the bream wouldn't be able to, to deal with. But 
as the session went on, I changed things round a bit. Um, I went over to a slightly more refined setup. The hook length's exactly the same, it's 20 pound Camatex soft. This time it's going down to a size 4 XSC hook. Um, once again though, I've got the piece of silicone down the shank to create a blowback effect and the trans car key line liner sleeve. Hook bait's slightly smaller, it's an 18mm hybrid topped off with a 10mm fluoro cell pop-up. And it is a little bit more vulnerable to the attentions of bream, which is a good thing and a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. I look at, like to look at it as a good thing. Um, if I'm catching bream, it then just enables me to work out or get a good idea of how many bream are feeding in the swim. Um, yesterday I had four bream in the middle of the day and every time I topped up with more bait. Whereas before when I was fishing with the double 18 mil, I had no bream action whatsoever. And I, I basically I, I had no idea if there was bream eating bait in the swim or not. So this just enables me to just have a, a better idea of what exactly is happening under the water. Bream's just rolled in the swim, talking about it. Um, also, these rigs were, were fished on the ready tied leg core leaders. Um, it's like 45 pound leg core leader, two foot long. Just, just really reinforces the last sort of few feet at, at the end tackle. Um, Cause there is quite a lot of snags and and, and things out there and, and they've got strong pads right under the rod tip as well so should a hook a fish it just gives it a little bit more reinforcement but i mean it's now gone past the time where i hooked that fish yesterday uh, i think it's going to be a hotter day today than it was yesterday it's an absolute scorcher already um, i'm not feeling it at all to be honest it's uh apart from that's the first bream i've seen roll for about 12 hours uh, i've not seen any carp since and sort of yesterday uh, yesterday evening i'm not feeling that at all i think the only chance i have got of saving this session now is to wind the rods in go for a drive around a few more stretches there's a few other uh, stretches that have been sort of put to me i'm going to go and have a little look and see if we can get some sort of stalking opportunity if there's a few little sort of arms that come off the off the rivers that are full of pads few areas that are snaggy and overgrown so I'm gonna go and have a walk and hopefully there is time to rescue this challenge yet. Well, we've just been on a, a big old tour of the area, uh, check out a few of the stretches of the river that people have recommended. And sadly, all leads led to a dead end. Didn't see any signs of, of carp at all. Saw some lovely stretches of water though, and you know, if I had a few more days ahead of me, then you know, they probably would have been worth checking out. But for the next two or three hours, I really wanted to try and find a few fish and have a go at stalking them, but sadly it wasn't meant to be. Um, I mean, this session, this challenge was always going to be tough. Uh, in an ideal situation, I would like to have pre-baited spots or stretches for days or, or even a week or a couple of weeks leading up to the session. So to come down and try and catch a carp off the cuff in 48 hours was always going to be a very tall ask. But we nearly did it, that's the thing. We came so close. That first morning, hooked that fish, which I sadly lost in the weed, came so close. and. I am still, 48 hours on, absolutely gutted about that. Um, I think you can tell in my voice, I, I, I am really distraught over it. I'll have to come back sometime and settle the scores, I'm sure. But another positive you can take from it is people are always saying that there's all the day ticket lakes are, are busy, you can't get swims, um, there's, there's fighting for swims. but. We've walked five or six miles of the river while I've been down here. We've seen one other angler and he was, he was coarse fishing. We haven't seen any other carp anglers in five or six miles of the river. And there's, there's fish over 30 pound in the river. Um, the ticket we got was 20 pound for a year as well. So when you put that in perspective, it, it's unbelievable value. But I think the only thing left for me to do now, it's nearly 25 degrees, it's baking hot. I've walked for miles and miles. There's a pub behind me. So I'm gonna get a nice cold beer and I'll see you next time.
Many thanks for watching this episode of Tackle Fanatics TV. Tackle Fanatics are a full Fox stockist and offer a massive range of products, the best prices around. We also offer finance to make your tackle purchase more affordable. To view our massive range of top quality tackle and bait, log on to www.tacklefanatic.co.uk. Tight lines and wet nets for everybody at CFTV.